Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is Overkill and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to try to help people who are new to DCS World or are interested in DCS World and may not have all the information. Um, this is something I've never tried to do before, um, so I'm going to do my best to um, try to shed some light on different um, everything from peripherals to training um, uh, aids, etc things that sort of help you break down the sim as best as I can in as short of a video as I can. This is going to be kind of a long one. Um, please bear with me. I really hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you find this useful. <clears throat> Again, this is directed mostly at people who are struggling with DCS world um, and don't have a whole lot of the training aids available or your interest in DCS world, you know, to let you know what you're getting into. Okay, so first, let's start by something that I have seen over and over and over again something that i see over and over and over again on the forums is people referring to dcs world as a game i know this sounds silly but i think this is probably some of that mental connection that adds to your frustration sorry for bumping the mic <clears throat> um when we think of a game we think of i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna relax i'm gonna chill i'm gonna jump in there and just have a great time i might die a few times but i'm gonna be able to get in there and compete Okay, Need for Speed is a game. Um, the you know Ace Combat is a game. The old Jane's World War II is a game. Battlefield, those are games. Okay, this is a simulator, and it's important to understand that distinction so you understand what the objective is of the developers, and so you can get an idea of what your experience is supposed to look like. Okay, so when we think a simulator, you have to understand that the purpose of a simulator is to give the person behind the screen as a as much of a real world experience as can be brought to the desktop. Okay, that's 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 what we look for when we're in X plane 11, X plane 11. You know, we're, we're looking to see what it's like to become a real pilot. Heck, real pilots use it to practice. Okay, to train things like the radio and navigation, ADF, whatever. Um, you know, same thing with P3D, obviously, you know, and, you know, Microsoft's, the new simulator that's coming. Um, even FSX. And DCS is bringing us that same simulation experience in the realm of combat. Okay, what does a real combat aviator go through? Okay, um, everything from Air Force to Navy, everything from World War II up to, you know, modern days with, you know, our, our Hornet. You know, um, so you you really have to step into that mindset and understanding before you get into DCS world and before you start deciding what aircraft you want to buy. Because, yes, the aircrafts can be absolutely expensive. Um, now, um, let's back up just a second here and let's talk about your you're thinking about getting a DCS world. What do you need? Essentially, the short version is you need any kind of joystick and a keyboard and a mouse. That, I'm going to tell you right now, leads to an extremely frustrating onboarding for DCS. My recommendations, everything I'm about to say is a recommendation, not necessarily a need, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to emphasize that this is going to smooth out your world a lot. First thing, HOTAS, hands-on uh, throttle and stick. You need to have a unit for designated for your throttle. You know, your left hand's on your throttle, the right hand's on the stick. That's what you're looking for. Okay, um, you need something with finite throttle control, especially when you're looking to do things like flying formation, learning air-to-air -air refueling. Um, if you don't have that finite control of the engines, it's going to make for a very frustrating time with a lot of the stuff, even right down to takeoff and landing. You know, um, plenty of times on landing, you're going to find yourself throttling up. And if you're throttling up too much, you're going to climb, you're going to be frustrated, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on. Um, the other thing that comes tends to come with pretty much every HOTAS that I've seen out there is buttons 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 okay the more buttons with dcs honestly the better um you don't have to go balls to the walls and buy the you know thrustmaster warthog if you have that kind of money to spend i absolutely recommend it um but you don't have to go that high i started with a microsoft 3d 3d extreme 2 so it's just so you guys understand i started with the bare minimum okay i had a keyboard and for those of you who don't know what the microsoft 3d extreme is let me show you real quick so you can get this lovely image in your head Microsoft 3D Extreme. Gosh, not even coming up on this. Let's go to images. There it is, right there. 
That's what I started with. Okay, and there's our itty bitty throttle and a handful of buttons, POV hat up here for looking around. That's what I started with, and it was hellacious. It was so frustrating. Okay, I didn't have everything that I needed available to me. I didn't have the buttons. I didn't have enough control of the throttle. Um, it, it was a nightmare. Um, so, and again, it's because of what this is, it being a simulator. And then I jumped into it, especially, I started out with the Flaming Cliffs 3, okay? So, so those of you who don't know, this is the SU-25T. It comes with DCS World. It is 100% completely free. You can download DCS World right now and fly that aircraft. Now, the trick is, is it's all keyboard commands. It has no clickable cockpits. You can't use your mouse and click it. And it's the same with anything in the Flaming Cliffs 3 package, such as the A-10A or... The F-15C. Okay, now the F-15C, ton of fun. Okay, but it doesn't have anything that you click in it. Okay, there's no use, use of the mouse. So everything you do is either by key mapping, mapping it to a button on your joystick or throttle, or through the keyboard. Okay, so those are things you want to be thinking about when getting into this. Now, in a minute here, I'm going to show you guys some tools and stuff that can help you if you're limited on key space. Okay, or, or key amounts, I should say. So... The so, so you have hands on stick and throttle it is my first or hands on throttle and stick it is my first recommendation for anyone new coming into DCS world. And like I said, you don't have to go crazy. I started with the X55. It's about a two hundred dollar, two hundred and fifty dollars maybe now. Um, and to give you guys the, the comparison, when I say don't go too crazy. The Thrustmaster Warthog is five hundred. OK, and doesn't have a twist grip. And the reason why you'd want a twist grip if you are just starting out is the twist grip can be used for your rudders. Aircrafts are steered on the ground with their rudders, especially the modern day jets. And you know, you need them for the fine out uh, coordinated turns when you're up in the air. Okay, um, helicopter, absolutely critical for rudders. And I, I would say absolutely critical for rudder pedals if you can do it. You can do it with a twist grip, but again, it, it, can, be, it can be tricky. It can be a little tough and frustrating, but it can be done. And certainly a lot easier than using a keyboard. Um, so when you are shopping for your hands-on throttle and stick, you know, I would definitely say go with what your budget can afford. Okay, don't break the bank for it. Don't, you know, skip out on paying electricity so you can buy that, you know, Thrustmaster or whatever. But definitely go with the higher end that your budget can support. Okay, the more, the better, the, more, the better the experience you're going to have in DCS. Absolutely. Okay, um, so the next thing I'm going to say is head tracking. Um, if you are, if you have a beefy machine and you're already rocking VR, stick with VR. You're going to absolutely love the immersion. It is fantastic. Um, but if you are just starting out and you don't have virtual reality, um, you can go with tra something like Track IR. Now, there are plenty of guys and girls who are in DCS World who use a point of view hat. For those of you who don't understand what I'm saying, the little hat on the top of the joystick that I was just showing you, um, you click it to the left, your head looks left. You click it to the right, your head looks right. Click it up, etc. right? Now, some of these guys are fast as heck on it. And I know there was one guy um, that's very popular with DCS World, the um, 104th Maverick. I know he used the POV hat for a very long time, and he's very formidable in the air. Very formidable. Um, he, he was a beast with it for a very long time until I think uh, I think it was his squadron that finally got him track IR. I, I could be mistaken, um, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Um, but uh, it's going to make your your world coming in as 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 a beginner much much easier um, to be able to look around, to be able to be lift your head up and and actually track a bandit versus trying to navigate the point of view hat while navigating the aircraft controls while watching your airspeed while um, you know manipulating your weapon systems you know and this could be in the air on the ground it doesn't matter um, it's going to be a real big deal um, now track IR I think is like a hundred and fifty dollars. Um, if I remember correctly, but I'm going to show you guys in a few minutes some very, very cheap alternatives to that that anybody can do. You just can't be afraid of it, okay? Uh, but we'll get to that. Um, the next thing that I'm going to say is uh, let's talk about the training, okay? So before I get into external sources, let's go right to what's inside the DCS world. You can click on this training menu, and any aircraft that you've purchased okay we'll have some training options okay this is a helicopter so this is cold start you know a little bit some are, are more advanced than others okay p47d there's only so much you can do with a p47 right that's the nice thing about the world war ii birds but 
you know, perfect example, World War II birds you would think would be easy to fly, you know, for, for maybe someone who might be uneducated on, you know, what they were really like. They're a beast. You know, that's where, you know, you're, with those point of view hats, you might be sacrificing trim. And with the old World War II birds or even something like the F-14, you are trimming it constantly. And if you don't know what trim is, look it up because <laughs> I'm trying to save some time here. But, um, you know, you're, you're going to be constantly trimming the F-14. Everybody's favorite, right? Because of Top Gun, everybody loved the F-14. Here's all the training. Really does break down very, very nicely. They did a good job with it. Um, but it's missing a lot, you know, and some, like I said, some trainings and tutorials are better than others, but you know, it's, it's hard. They're trying to teach you what pilots learn over years, you know, in, what is this? 15, maybe 12 missions, somewhere around there, 15, 20 missions. Okay. Um, now there is each one of these trainings. There is someone actively talking to you. You're hearing it. Um, the missions are paused at certain points automatically to give you a chance to read it and really understand what's going on. There's highlights that pop up in the cockpit that say here, click here, click here. And then when you click the highlight goes away. Um, so that's a, that's a start. This is just what's coming with DCS world. But, you know, the reason why I wanted to reference the F-14 is everyone loved the F-14. Oh, I can't wait for the F-14. Oh, when the F-14 comes out, I'm going to be, you know, I, I know that bird. You know, and then they come to find out the F-14 was a very unforgiving, very potentially, you know, for someone who wasn't expecting it. It's a hard aircraft to fly. Um, it, it, you know, every time the wing, you know, it's got that variable wing geometry. So, you know, as you accelerate, the wings change position. As you decelerate, the wings change position. Um, and every time that happens, the flight dynamics of the aircraft are changing. So it's going to pitch up. It's going to pitch down. It might turn. It's going to roll. Um, turning with the wings extended, you know, versus with the wings folded back is going to be significantly different. If you're in a turn as the wings are retracting, it's going to fight you. And, you know, just I don't want to go F-14 crazy, but to give you guys an idea. Um, people who jumped in the F-14 found it to be a whole lot more difficult than what they were expecting, you know, because they see these, you know, you watch Top Gun once, oh, I can do that. <laughs> no, you can't. Um, it, it's tough. You know, it takes a lot of practice to really get that bird under control. Um, but like, you know, the F-18 breaks it all down. So you have these training missions available. I don't want to go on a tangent. Um, I think I already did. Um, but, um... So you have some train that's already built in and then you have the Flaming Cliffs three aircraft, which, you know, like I said, are, are these guys here um, that are keyboard uh, commands only, you know, so if you don't want to be using the mouse and you just want to be, you know, I think that the Flaming Cliffs three are nice for someone just starting out and to teach you. Um, how to understand the aerodynamics of the aircrafts, right? Um, you know, you, you are still with the Flaming Crifts 3 aircraft, you're still going to get that drag of the wing. You're still going to get that drag of the weapons. You're still going to feel the difference, quote unquote, feel. Um, feel the difference as the plane lightens up, okay? Um, and then turbulence and things like that, you're still going to get that impact. So, you know, they're a good start. You get quite a few aircraft, you know, for, you know, a fairly cheap amount, but you don't get the clickable uh, interaction with the cockpit, okay? Everything is keyboard command or in which command you bind to a button, okay? Um, if you download DCS World right now, you get this SU-25T, which again, keyboard command, and you get the... I may not have installed it this time. Where are you? It's the TF-51. It's the P-51D, um, but it's the training version of it. And all that means is that it doesn't have any armament. Okay, so the TF-51, you'll get that World War II experience. Um, fully clickable cockpit. You start the engine just like the way a real pilot would. You got to flip the switches. You got to prime the engine, all that good stuff. Um, everything's manual. You can bind things to key commands if you choose, but you can also just use your mouse and click around the cockpit. Um, so you get that full fidelity experience as well when using the TF-51 that, again, comes free with DCS World. You get it the second you download it. Um, it just doesn't have any guns on it, but it's still a blast to fly. And trust me, something like the uh, P-51, TF-51 is can be a nightmare. It can be very frustrating. One of the things that happens with World War II birds that people don't understand is you have to very, very... Um, diligently manage the engine uh, temperatures, carburetor temperature, oil temperature. And if you don't, you're sitting there taking off. You're at full throttle. Next, you know, you watch the prop stop right in front of you as you go diving to the ground because you can't restart it because the engine seized. Okay. Um, again, simulator. Okay. So if I would recommend starting out with just downloading DCS World, don't buy any aircraft right away. Get a feel for it. Make sure it's something that you're going to be interested in. When you start looking into buying aircraft, do your research. 
there are tons and tons and tons of YouTube videos um, from myself. You have Jabbers, you have Spud Knocker, you have Red Kite, um, uh, Growling Sidewinder. These are just a few big names, you know, and I'm the smallest of, of everyone I just mentioned, you know, when it comes to YouTube popularity. Um, but uh, there's tons of reviews of these aircraft and a hundred other users, YouTube users that I haven't even mentioned um, that all do reviews of these aircraft. So if you're thinking about buying the Viper, okay, go to YouTube. Um, you know, find just a search DCS F6, DCS World F16 um, Viper review. I guarantee you, you'll come up with a ton. And they'll tell you what it's like. You'll get to see them in the cockpit. You'll get to see what it's like. They'll tell you if it's good. They'll tell you if it's bad. Um, you know, so do your reviews first. You know, find out if this is really an aircraft that you want. Don't don't buy the aircraft simply because you saw it on Top Gun, okay? Um, because it, that may be a mistake. Um, so aircraft, do your reviews. Peripherals, get what your budget will allow you to get starting into it. Um head tracking big stress reliever when learning um and i think that that's where i'll, I'll hold off on that so let's let now let's talk about you know some training aids so let's go to my browser here for a second so this is the first one i'm going to have a link to all this stuff in the description below trucks dcs tutorial library this is a community member who makes these incredibly awesome documents for training um let's look at i don't know let's look at the harrier okay let's bring up the harriers all right, this is probably going to be massive. Oh, no, it's not too bad. Now, it's going to take a second to load because it's loading a very large PDF document. Um, but um, so if it, we get white screens for a second. Actually, that one's probably a smaller one. But he breaks down every part of the aircraft with labels and arrows and lines so you can learn where stuff is. Okay. Literally everything. Each part of the screens tells you what they're identified as. Okay, T pod menu, so this is your targeting pod. I mean, these are just a few examples. Okay, um, literally everything. Look at this. This is a breakdown of the HUD. You wonder what anything on the HUD is? Here you go. Okay, all these sections for the uh, UFC, the upfront control panel. Okay, breaks everything down step by step. And this entire document, all of his documents are very structured. So, first, we're just going to take a cruise around the cockpit. Okay, part three, cockpit engages. We're, we're literally, he started from one side and he's working his way around to the other. Okay, and now we're on the external. Breaks down everything on the external side of the aircraft. Okay, we're still in part three. So let's go down to part four, startup procedures. Here we go. So here's first, pre-start. Tells you what to do before even thinking about flipping anything on. Okay, and notice that every number here, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's two, there's three. There's 1A, 1B, 1C, okay? And there's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay? So, I mean, he literally walks you right through it. And he has just about, and this, he goes, the entire thing is set up like this. INS alignment, okay? Part three, part five here, takeoff, walks you through the takeoff. It's very structured. He works your way up. First, let's look around the cockpit. Then let's start the aircraft. Let's align the navigation. Let's taxi. Then let's take off. Then he'll start getting into the armament. Okay. And actually, he may even go to landing here. Let's check it out. Look at this. This is all still takeoff. Probably going through short field or short or long takeoff. Here's your ship takeoff. I mean, literally breaks down every part of the aircraft. And then, nope, we go to landing. Perfect. Okay, it's very structured. First, I'm going to teach you how to what the cockpit is. Then I'm going to teach you how to start it up. Then I'm going to teach you how to take off. Then I'm going to teach you how to get it back home. Okay, so these documents are really, really, really amazing. Okay, and you can download them. Um, you don't have to come to the website every time. And he's got just about every aircraft. Um, I think the only ones that might be missing are the Flaming Cliffs 3. And again, those are all keyboard controlled. They're simple. Uh, flight models, I think, except for the F-15, it might be professional flight model. Don't quote me. Um, but, I mean, you guys see it here, okay? These are your helicopters and definitely all the jets. I mean, these are all full fidelity, clickable cockpit jets. Um, so, you guys can look at these before you buy your aircraft. You guys can take a look. Okay, what's the training going to look like for me? Um, DCS does also give you documentation. So... This is the drive I'm installed it on. DCS World Open Beta is what I use. Mods aircraft. Okay, and then now let's go. Let's look in the F5. 
and let's go to documentation and here we go of course Adobe what else would I open it with um, and of course it opens on a different monitor and of course it's massive for whatever reason so this isn't near as thorough but again still gives you something to start with there's still documentation here okay um, breaks down the controls breaks down the cockpit okay you still get quite a bit of it still doing pr principally it's doing the same thing right and this comes with the installation when you purchase the aircraft and install it you'll go to that location that I just showed you up here on the screen let's bring it back okay here's the doc the location of it and you can pull up this for any aircraft that you currently have installed these are all the aircraft I have installed currently okay so again something to think about there for your training curve or your learning curve okay next let's talk about buttons okay you bought a hotas or you have a stick but you don't have a lot of buttons okay you weren't able to go out and buy the x56 or or the thrustmaster warthog that's completely understandable okay so now let's look at something like this this is another mod the community uh, or uh, I should say a tool a com community member made and it's continuing to develop this was last updated on 612 of this uh, this year okay so you know less than a month ago okay this RS mapper this is my tutorial anyway <laughs> or my review but you can see there's the f-15 okay I use the f-15 on purpose because it was a non clickable cockpit so everything you do has to be done either by a button command or by the keyboard stroke as I've said a few times here I know um, but what this software allows you to do is map multiple functions to a single button so you can have one button you tap it it does one thing you tap it and hold it it does something completely different you can have switches where you flip the switch up okay it does one thing when you release it it does something completely different you can set up one button that will change profile so you can have multiple profiles essentially you can have as long as you can memorize it you can have your buttons do an infinite number of things based on you switching profiles you can have one button that toggles and I go through some of that here I actually need to do an updated one because he's changed a lot um, but uh, anyway th watch this video okay this will give you guys a really good idea on what RS mapper does and you can I think you can use this for anything all it is is a key is a uh, keystroke mapper so what this does is everything that you enter in here you click the button that you want long story short and then you assign it when I push this button I want you to do this keyboard command so everything has to have a keyboard command which you can map in DCS to anything okay so it gives you a lot of options watch it I, I promise you guys will like it and literally I think it can work for anything um, actually I know it does I was using it on American Truck Simulator the other day okay so anyway so that's an option for you guys who are limited on button space okay and it's very lightweight software it just has one EXE you launch it and off you go you're off to the races um, head tracking. I told you guys I would show you guys something that was cheap for head tracking. Um, here's just one. All I did was do DIY head tracker. You can see what I searched right up here. And there's a list of them that come up. Okay, look at this. Okay, here's a ton of them that just roll out. Okay. And they're, they're no joke. They're 10 bucks. Um, my track IR sensor died. Okay, what the, the part that actually the camera that sits on top of the monitor stopped working one day. Um, I replaced it with this software. Uh, that this gentleman shows here okay I'll show you here right there this guy right here this is a free software you download and it actually um, I need to do a review on this because for those of you who are familiar with DCS this actually works better than track IR's natural point with this software you can stick your head out the window and for those of you who are new with track IR's natural point software you can't okay with a lot of track IR software you can't stick your head out the window which is a drag because in World War II planes you totally want to and every other plane is just kind of cool but for those of you who don't know, it's called this open track right here. Um, you can use this and you are able to stick your head out the window. So bonus. Anyway. Um, so, but this is, I think, I mean, he's got $10 written here. That's pretty accurate. Um, especially if you have a 3D printer. But you don't have to use a 3D printer. There's some of these where guys are using pieces of cardboard and or making like plaster uh, frames for it but don't be intimidated by wiring and LEDs it's watch this video just this one right here I promise you it's so easy the address is right up here so you would want to type in this and I'll try to remember to put it in the description below sorry wait you want that okay um, ignore everything else that's time so if I were to do let's just let me show you guys real quick back that out hit enter takes me to the video okay takes me to the start of it so there's your address for this video right here um, <clears throat> but it's an old PS3 camera 
um, not used anymore. It's like six dollars on Amazon. Um, I think the LEDs. I, I bought everything just cause. You know, I wanted to see. You know, what it was. What it would actually cost me out the door. And out the door, if I had nothing else, um, it would have cost me about twenty four dollars. Okay, so it's super cheap, guys. And to give you guys an idea, let's 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 look what Track IR five is right now. Track IR five. Okay, here's Natural Point. Sorry, I have a filter that makes the screen darker. And let's look for where is it? So this is the sensor that I told you died that that PS3 camera replaced. Um, gosh, it's been so long. There you go, right there. 149.95, or you can do it yourself for 24 bucks and a little bit of your time. I promise it's easy. <clears throat> and many of the stuff to make it you may have laying around your home. So anyway, so that covers the head tracking thing. Uh, we covered head tracking. We've covered key buttons. Definitely watch these these videos, guys. I promise they're extremely helpful. This is your number one uh, first stop if you buy a new aircraft for DCS World. Go to Chuck's um, library here. Again, I will definitely have this in the description below because it's critical. Um, and it will make your world a lot easier. But actually go through the dock. Take your time. And I think that's going to bring me to the next thing that's going to alleviate the most frustration for you guys is patience you've got to have patience with dcs world it's a ton of information thrown at you very very quickly everybody wants to jump up start shooting missiles start dropping bombs and it just i'm going to be blunt if you have very limited simulator experience very limited flight simulation experience i should say um the learning curve is too steep for you to expect that that's an unrealistic unrealistic expectation to set for yourself Okay, so let me pause the video for a second and see how long we're at because I know we've been at it for a minute. Hey guys, so real quick, change of plans. I'm going to make a second video. We're going to do a part two um, because I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit longer than um, I wanted it to already. Um, so just be on the lookout for that second video and I will catch you guys shortly. Hit the like and subscribe button for me. It helps me out quite a bit. And uh, make sure to hit that bell for notifications of future videos. Take care, guys. Stay safe. Stay healthy through these times. We'll see you soon.